Onyx Pages. For those of you who are new, welcome back. To those of you who have joined the family recently, happy to see you here. So this is going to be a an initial thoughts video. First thoughts, first impressions, actually second impressions because I watched Black Panther twice yesterday uh, uh, about the movie. So there will be spoilers. If you don't like spoilers, uh, please just appreciate the Princess Shuri makeup look. I tried to channel Jackie Aina uh, and uh, come back when you've watched the movie and for those of you who are welcome to move who want to move on let's do that now so all in all I absolutely loved the Black Panther movie I did I thought it was incredible uh, it is the most um, prominent the best example of an Afrofuturistic movie an Afrofuturism movie that I've ever seen in my life um, and it touched me so I'm so happy that it exists I'm happy that future generations will just be able to know that this was a thing that happened and it won't have to be as huge but I'm happy that it was huge for me uh, and I also have some critiques about the world that I'll talk about a little bit and uh, and then some questions for you so that we can chat in the discussion comments area of this video. So let me just get into it. What did I love about Black Panther? I loved so many things. I loved the ideas. So I, I loved the science. I loved the spirituality. I loved the conflict. I loved um, the costumes and the fight scenes and so many, so many things about it. Um, I think I'll start with the idea. So the idea that there is a world, a hidden society in Africa that is technologically advanced, that is advanced in terms of its resources, that um, could dominate the planet but doesn't uh, is, is there to sort of protect and grow its people and its society I think that that is a very compelling idea um, and I think a lot of us wish for that to be or aspects of that to be true um, I definitely nerded out on the science I love absolutely loved Princess Shuri's character she was knowledgeable and cocky and funny and um, a total nerd and irreverent and I absolutely love that character the fact that she can be you know a late teenager or in her early 20s and just like you know play around and tussle with her brother but also protect has the potential to protect the planet and to to multitask um, she's just an incredible character I love the Dora Milaje, the way that they fight, the way that they look, the way that they engage with each other, um, the fact that they, at least one of them, so in the Nikita character, that she's pulled by a mission that is more than just about saving and protecting King Chala. Um, so I really enjoyed, I, I enjoyed the connection between the ancestral realm and the present realm. So the ways that as a part of becoming king, what you have to do is connect with your ancestor and ask them questions or promise something um, or have a, have a communion with them as, as a part of taking on the next step of your journey as king. So I, I absolutely loved that. I loved the connection between like the flower um, bringing magical powers to the Black Panther, that being the source of the Black Panther but that mirror so that being like an ancestral piece a natural resource from the earth piece but then also the technology of the suit so the the old and ancient coming together with like the new to make this superhero um that's an incredible thing i'm not i mean there are some superheroes that get their power from technology only like they can do great things with their wonderful suit but there's no real connection to a people there's no connection to a reason to liberation like none of that is there but that's there in black panther and i also like the some of the conflict like some of the big questions so why is uh njaba or killmonger like why is he so mad you know what does it mean for him to be in in essence like the child of a, the diaspora 
and feeling cut off from a world that his father has told him about that is so rich with resources and rich with culture and and to not have that and to, to live in a world where people like him are not considered to be where black people's people like us like me are considered to not be valuable and to not be at the pinnacle of futurism or creation or innovation um, and to live with that knowledge right like there's a yearning inside of him that i identify with and i get and there's also like an anti-elitism and anti-capitalism a little bit, a little bit, not so much capitalism, but an anti-elitism that uh, runs with his character. And I think that his critiques of Wakanda, that Wakanda is keeping resources to itself and that there are lots of people who could, that, that could benefit from what Wakanda has and protects and that, that we would be better as a result of it, or that there are people who are potentially Wakandans in some way that are not getting the benefits of the society because they're no longer in the society. Like all of that, I think is really great because if you'll recall, like he is the son of King Chaka's brother. So he's Chala's cousin, right? But there were Wakandan spies all around the world for centuries that live among the people. And so if we follow that through, that means that there are Wakandans all over the planet. And those Wakandans may have families and are part of communities and are, do not get the benefits of the Wakandan uh, society because they're effectively like gone from the society. Um, so there's a bunch of things there that that I, I thought, you know, those conflicts are really interesting. And also the fifth the fifth tribe, um, so Mbaka's tribe, the Jabari, they are fierce warriors. And I believe that they're the most fierce warriors of the five, what would have been the, the five original tribes. Um, and they have a really interesting critique of Wakanda. So they believe that the nation of Wakanda uh, and its sub tribes are not using the resources well, that they don't have the capacity to protect the monarchy, that they, they should not be the rulers of Wakanda um, because they're, they've gotten too complacent in some ways. And not only that, they've forgotten the, the Jabari, right? They've left them to be in the mountains and have not uh, communicated with them for centuries because the Jabari decided not to be a part of the Wakandan empire. So. Um, you know, there are interesting critiques there about different approaches to leadership and what happens when there's a disagreement with a, an approach to leadership, why that, you know, the fact that that leads to being kicked out of a nation uh, and not having access to those resources. And we don't see a lot about how Jabari, how the Jabari people have been able to continue, but we do know that the Jabari know exactly what's happening in Wakanda and in the world. So they have not... Um, been underdeveloped as a result of not being a part of the Wakandan empire, um, but they have a strong critique, which leads to the challenge to the throne. So there were just, there's so many, so many things that I really loved about, about the um, movie, the costumes, great, the makeup, great, uh, the scenery, great, the CGI, there were moments when it was really obvious, but you know, also great the fact that we're taken from wakanda to um a city in the u.s to a city in, in korea to a city in the uk um like that we see how wakanda engages with different parts of the world that we see the un like all of that is really awesome as well so some of my critiques of the movie um have to do with the fact that it it, it has to do with the fact that i'm an afrofuturist and that when i watch or read or engage with any kind of Afrofuturist art. I do so from a critical race theory, a queer perspective, an intersectional feminist perspective. So I will not be convinced and I will not be inspired by a world where women are not considered to be equal to men and where people, and, and I won't even be convinced by a world where there are gender binaries, like that's not, that's not part of my futuristic Africa. Um, I will not be convinced by or excited by a world where there's still oppression, even if it's oppression among the, the Wakandan empire, right? Um, I won't be inspired by a world where black women can just be killed and nobody really does anything about it or says anything about it 
um, or there's not a critique of that. Like those, or, or where the majority of the relationships or the normalized relationships are heterosexual. That's not a world that I will be excited about. And I certainly will not be excited about, or f totally excited, I fully excited about a movie where a legitimate woman and woman romance was just cut out of the plot. So while I really enjoyed Black Panther, it is not without its missed opportunities. And in some cases, uh, there were deliberate omissions, such as the woman and woman relationship. Um, so my enthusiasm for the movie has been curbed as a result of, of some of that, because if we can, if, if even in the worlds that we create that we're just imagining, if, if, if these issues are still not dealt with, then like, what, what are we doing? <laughs> like, how different are we really? So one example of um, one of the issues that I have is like that opening scene where T'Challa interrupts a mission that Nakia is on. And she's on a mission to free some girls who um, have been taken away by armed men in the middle of the night in these trucks, probably away from their villages and, and to, um, uh, to another place where they will likely be violated, uh, repeatedly violated. And so she's gone undercover, presumably to figure out where the home base is and to destroy it. That is a very necessary and laudable mission for Adora Malaje. Except it doesn't really finish. It doesn't doesn't get completed. And why does it not get completed? Because Chala, who has found out now with the death of his father, is going to become king, wants her to be at the ceremony to watch him get crowned king of Wakanda. So we have these two options for this warrior. One is to save a bunch of girls. And the second is to stand and watch him and cheer for him as he becomes king. Like, really? So, you know, we still see this kind of patriarchal male-centered uh, view of what our priorities should be. I mean, he's about to be king. Like, he could have just been like, yo, Nikita has, like, some women to save, so let's just do it on Wednesday, <laughs> right? But that didn't happen, so I had a problem with that. Um... And I think another issue was that we see that Killmonger, like even though he believes in this sort of revolution um, and he believes in a redistribution of Wakandan, Wakandan resources, he also is a misogynist, right? So he like, he kills the woman who's been by his side to help him get vibranium. He kills her, she's collateral. Um, he then throttles a woman an elder who stands up to him and says, you can't, we can't get rid of all of these flowers because the Black Panthers who succeed you will need them to get their power. And he's like, I don't care. You follow my orders. I'm going to strangle you. And then they incinerate all the flowers. Um, and he kills one of the Dora Milaje. He's just like, he's totally fine with, with in his role as king, killing well, fake king, he kills one of his protectors without batting an eye. And when I think about it, like, I know that there are a lot of like nameless figures like that get killed throughout, but those deaths really um, stood out for me because they were deaths of people who were legit characters and they were all like black women, right? And I think, if I think about it, I think all the black women who we see killed in Black Panther were killed by black men. I think. Yeah. So, right? Like, let's talk about misogyny and let's talk about the missed opportunities to address that. Um, while there were, while some were addressed, um, let's talk about that. Um, so, you know, there were some holes there in the, in the plot. There were some missed opportunities in terms of this world that is created, uh, this world of Wakanda. Um, and I don't know that I've talked about this already, but I will say very briefly that there is an interesting conversation about uh, the continent versus the diaspora and what the relationships are between Wakandans who have always stayed on the continent and those who by choice or not by choice are in other parts of the world 
who that don't have that connection to Wakanda anymore that might want it and but that can certainly benefit from those resources and what does it mean for Wakanda to hold the resources for its own use um, so Wakanda is definitely a society that's advanced in science and technology that draws from ancestral wisdom but it also is an elite an elitist society, it's a monarchy, and it's a patriarchal society. Um, and it's a society where its world builders explicitly excluded a female and female romance. So that's not a world that I can stand behind 100%. Um, and we're in 2018, and there was a template for different things, and that template wasn't used. So that's my concern about like, our imagination because if you know if you watch this channel and you know why I read and you know why I watch movies you understand that um, the the imagination like the way that we use our imagination and the worlds that we create through the use of our imaginations they do have consequences because we orient ourselves towards a particular society and we we walk in that direction so if the worlds that we're imagining the make-believe worlds can't break down some of the oppressions around us then what are we then what are we doing and we need to speak about that and raise that so while i really really enjoyed black panther there were elements of it that i did not appreciate so let me think is there anything else oh there are some so i didn't talk about princess shuri yet but i just love her i love how geeky she is and amazing she is and her quips were really great and there were some really great lines like Oh, you brought me another broken white boy to fix, which was amazing. Um, and when she calls um, Everett, you know, don't interrupt me, colonizer. And the fact that, at least the way that it came across to me, was that she was like, she was teasing him and mocking him by calling him a co colonizer. Like it wasn't, I didn't read it as a term of like endearment. To me, to me, it was kind of like, well, your world, you couldn't take care of your own world, so you went and tried to colonize another world and you failed. Like, I'm certainly reading into that one word, but I, the, the fact that she was teasing him by calling him colonizer was actually really funny. Like, it was such an, it was an irreverence that I really appreciated. Um, and just, there's just so much. There's so much. There will be other videos. There will be a review on this. So, um, oh no, there's one more thing I want to talk, talk about. Uh, so, the General Okoye. So there's this moment where she's operating the ship in meditation. Like that was amazing. The fact that she is controlling and directing a ship with her mind while in meditation, while she can still communicate with Chala and give him direction. That's amazing. And Princess Shuri does something very similar. She is in battle against the second Black Panther. Like she's like, doo -doo -doo. like she's, she's like shooting at him while she's teaching Everett how to control, to remotely control a ship that she made, that she made American style so that he would get it, right? Like the ability of, of these women to like multitask, which actually isn't a new concept because African women be multitasking like forever, so that's not new. Um, but that portrayal was really, really amazing. Um, okay, I'm done. There's lots more. There will be other thoughts and other videos. Uh, so I really hope that you enjoyed this and in the discussion area, you know, I'd love to hear what you think about the world building in Wakanda, in, in Black Panther, the world building of Wakanda. What was amazing for you? Did you find anything um, that was odd or inconsistent or that was a missed opportunity? And if so, what is it? And if you could be the writer of the um, next Black Panther films, which there will be, what would you add to the world or take away? All right, thought experiment done. Thank you very much for watching Onyx Pages and I will see you next time. Bye. Yeah.